This is the Ohm Genomics Podcast, a casual conversational podcast about the non-scientific parts of life in the biotech industry. This show contains conversations about topics including career paths, side hustles, and whatever is going on in the field right now. We are your hosts, Maria Nadestad and Robert Abukhalil. We're taking the conversations we might have at a conference cocktail hour and bringing them to you on your walk, drive, or while you do the dishes. So today, this is episode one, yay, and we're going to talk about sabbaticals. Yes, we are. What are sabbaticals, Maria? Right. Okay. So here we're talking about the unofficial sabbatical, not the type that you might take if you're a faculty, like the academic sabbatical where you actually get permission from your employer to take time off and go do other projects. That's usually what a sabbatical means. But here we're doing it unofficially. We're talking about the unofficial industry sabbatical, where basically you just quit your job and don't get a new one for a while. So we wanted to talk about how fun employment is a little bit different from a sabbatical. Yeah. So to me, fun employment means you already have a job lined up afterwards, and you might have a few weeks, maybe a month in between jobs. Right. You would consider this a lot less risky because you already have your next gig lined up. And you're not doing it for long enough that you actually have time to do projects. You're just taking an extended vacation. So have you ever taken a fun employment, like a short break in between jobs? You know what? I have not, which is really sad. I took a sabbatical once where I quit my job and did not have one lined up. But prior to that, all my jobs, like my last day was on a Friday and my first day of the next job was the Monday afterwards which is a terrible idea. Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty easy win just to give them a date that isn't two weeks after you're gonna tell your current employer. Yeah. Make it start like a month out or something. Huge caveat with this episode in general about finances, but I think we'll say a little bit more about that. Obviously you need enough money to be able to survive in between paychecks. We did have someone we know who did this just for a month in between jobs had Mm -hmm. the next job lined up already when she quit the previous job and just made sure that there was a month in between the key to making that work of course is making sure that you know when your last day is actually going to be and the company you're currently at doesn't pressure you to stay longer and wrap things up for like a month instead of two weeks or something and that your next employer doesn't pressure you to start sooner. That's right. Oftentimes, I feel like that pressure is partly self-imposed, where you think they can't afford to wait for your amazing skills to join the team and revolutionize their product. But truth is, they can absolutely wait, and you can wait too. It's so easy, especially when you're leaving a job too, to say, oh, it's going to take me a long time to wrap things up. I also knew someone who stayed at their job for four weeks because they were managing a bunch of people and had all these important things. But at the end, he was like, okay, maybe I should have just left after two weeks because it kind of felt like I was a dead man walking and everybody Mm. was just sad around me all the time because I was leaving. So... Yeah, the whole fun employment thing is just something we wanted to chat a little bit about before we get into the real sabbatical where you actually are doing it for longer and you have time to do projects. So I think a good way to start this conversation and get into a little bit more depth is to just talk about our own experiences. So Robert, do you want to start by talking about your experience with your recent sabbatical? I sure do. So I took a sabbatical (laughs) in 2021 right after quitting my job. I had nothing lined up. I had convinced myself that I would take at least three months off, work on side projects that would now become main projects, and that I wouldn't try to apply to jobs for at least three months. I thought that would be very difficult, you know, the uncertainty of not knowing what I'm doing next. But it turns out I've just accumulated so many ideas for things I've wanted to build that I lasted six months easily before I started looking for another job. Hmm. So the projects you were working on, you said they were side projects before? Yes. Some of them didn't exist. Some of them were just vague ideas. For example, sandbox.bio came out of my sabbatical. For those who don't know what it is, 
first of all that would be how most could people you? <laughs> unless they follow you on twitter that's true or follow me on twitter i retweet like everything you do <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so Sandbox.bio is an online platform that has interactive tutorials for learning how to use the command line, especially with the bioinformatics tools. And this was an idea I had floated around in every single talk I've given in the past about a technology called WebAssembly. And I always mentioned it as one potential really good application. And maybe a few weeks into my sabbatical, I was giving a talk and repeated that same slide. And I thought, let me just implement this once and for all so I can stop mentioning it as a hypothetical. Because mm -hmm. it was such an obvious application to you that you're just like, right. this should exist, but it doesn't. And I want to take time to build it. Yeah. And the key thing is that sandbox.bio would not have existed without that sabbatical because it was such a large project and needed a lot of contiguous time to build it. It just wouldn't have worked to spend a few hours here and there spread out across a whole week. Hmm. And you have a lot of experience building side projects in general. So you know how far you can get on the side versus how far you can get when you devote your time to it full time. That's right. Yeah, I've built other projects while having other jobs and they tend to be quite slow. Mm -hmm. And so it was a really nice surprise to be able to see progress move so quickly mm. on a project. What was it like to tell people at work and what were their reactions to, I'm quitting the job. Okay, where are you going next? Nowhere. People were quite excited because this is something that not a lot of people get to do. Some people did not believe me and thought I was just not comfortable sharing the next job I was going to, which I think is pretty funny. This is so rare that this was sometimes the reaction. Yeah, it's almost like it was easier for them to believe that you were going on a secret mission or something at some other company and it was going to be this big secret as right. opposed to just like, no, I'm just quitting my job and not planning to do anything for a while. Yeah, and I think this speaks to why we're doing this episode is because we want people to know that this is an option. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and something that we have both found has been really helpful. So sometime during your sabbatical, you said, okay, it's time to think about getting the next job, and you started applying to jobs. What were companies' reactions to your sabbatical when you were interviewing? My favorite was... One person was asking me, huh, so you've only been at sabbatical for six months. What what happened? <laughs> <laughs> they thought sabbatical was the name of the company. But in general, people were really also excited about it. It was good for a lot of reasons. First, it gave me something to talk about. When you're interviewing with people, they will often ask you, what is one recent project that you're really proud of? If you build something on your sabbatical, you can use that as a great example of how you can build cool things. You're self-motivated enough to build it without the pressure of having a job. Mm -hmm. And in one case, I was going into a systems design interview where the interviewer saw sandbox.bio on my CV, played around with it, thought it was really cool and said, let's forget about the systems design question I was going to ask you, which was pretty boring anyway. Why don't you pull up GitHub and walk me through your code and explain to me the architectural decisions you made and how you made the tool scalable. And that was my favorite interview of all time because I got to talk about something I built. Yeah. And you were just interviewing to be a software engineer here. So normally if you're right. interviewing as a scientist, it's normal to give talks about your work that you know really well. But software engineering interviews tend to really challenge you on things that sometimes you don't do every day. Yeah. So this that is, is like pretty yeah. different. That's true. Yeah, that's awesome. I want all of our interviews to be like that, where you just show up and demo your tools for them and talk about, oh, here's what I did and how I did it. Yeah. That sounds like so much fun. So how about you? How was your experience sabbaticaling? Yeah. Right. So the closest thing I've done to a sabbatical 
is I was trying to actually start a company that I was going to do full time, but it ended up being a little bit more of a sabbatical. So this was right after my PhD. I planned to do this. So it wasn't quitting a job exactly, but right after my PhD and it was very open ended. I didn't know how long I was going to do it, but I also ended up doing it about six months before starting a job. But what I did during that time was I started a YouTube channel called OM Genomics. And so as you can clearly see from this podcast, yeah, as you can clearly see from this podcast, that has kind of become a base of a very small media empire that we can keep working on over time. You know, I made a YouTube video every week for a while while I was doing that full time. And I also built Circa, which is software for making Circos plots. And so any of these things are listed on omgenomics.com if you're interested. But when I look back on my career as a whole, even though I was only doing these things for six months, they loom very large in my story of my career. Hmm. And, you know, that's how I started my YouTube channel. It's how I continue to... I do make some videos additionally onto that YouTube channel. Which so, are really good, by the way. Oh, thank you. My favorite are those <laughs> Q&As where a certain Robert is, yes. is featured there. <laughs> Highly recommended. Yeah, totally. I love the bit we did at the beginning of one Q&A episode where you're like reading, like, I am Maria Nadestad. And I, I go in and like, no, I am Maria Nadestad. <laughs> just, that just happened. It wasn't even like planned maybe you planned it but i did not not. (laughs) know that was really funny i think at the time i did sort of think of this as a little bit of a failure to make the business work as a real full-time business that pays rent right yeah because it didn't but it ended up still being really important to my own career story and i gave a presentation at a couple of companies towards the end of this experience, one of which actually turned into the company wanting to hire me. Hmm. How did those come by? In one case, I went to a conference and I wasn't even presenting at that one, but I met somebody who had met me and seen my presentations at a previous conference as well. And so he invited me to come and give a talk. And I gave a talk basically about all of my career experiences, much of which was focused on what I had just done in this kind of full-time building my own business experience that I might call a sabbatical now. Right. And it wasn't so much that it helped me get my next job. I think that's probably part of it. Like it certainly helped, but it built my abilities in a really big way. I guess I can say what company it is. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. Well, in that case. Okay. You're going to say bad things about yours. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So my first company that I worked at after this sabbatical with OM Genomics was DNA Nexus. And it was a really great place to be. I quite enjoyed it and learned a lot. But yeah, one of the things I did there was like, oh, I already have this experience doing YouTube stuff. So... I ended up, you know, taking the initiative to create tutorial videos for the platform and talking to the marketing people more and stuff like that. It's using some of those skills that I ended up building in my sabbatical time that I just could use again later. Yeah, that's really interesting. I felt the same thing during my sabbatical where because you're working on your own, you have to do everything. Mm. including the marketing, the sales, the design, and the coding. Yeah. I think it's such a danger, especially when you work in a really large organization, that you end up being almost too specialized with one particular small aspect of the application. Right. You think uh, front-end engineers that can't hook up to anything in the back end. Mm. And if you do side projects, then you kind of have to do everything. And you also have to do it outside of a team. You have to set the roadmap yourself. Right. I think that gives you a lot of experience that leads you down more of a tech lead road very fast. It enables you to take on that kind of 
role. It makes it easier to have vision for the product, even when you're at a company later. And it just makes you more interested to insert yourself into everything and say, hey, why are we doing it this way? Right. Because I have experience doing it a different way. I have experience setting my own roadmap, tracking my own progress, deciding what an application should contain, building the UX, the marketing, sales, everything. And so that gives you a level of experience that most software engineers or scientists just don't have. Right. And that's all leadership. Initiative. Yes. Uh, synchronicity. <laughs> <laughs> Synergy? Yes. <laughs> what is synchronicity? I don't know. Stay tuned for episode two. <laughs> synchronicity. Yeah, exactly. So for our audience who is considering doing a sabbatical, what would you say is the biggest benefit? I think it depends on where you're coming from, right? For us, I think we both had a backlog of ideas that we hadn't had time to fully devote ourselves to. Yes. And that was just a little bit grinding on the psyche or something. You know, you're just kind of, oh, I want to build this thing like it's just sitting there in the back of your mind maybe for years and you just kind of want to go to try to build that thing yeah um so that's like it's not even a benefit it's just a requirement like it, it's almost necessary mm. to get that out of your system sometimes so if anybody has those kinds of things and i think just taking a few months can often get all those ideas out of your system and into actual products onto the internet Maybe if it works, great. If it doesn't make a bunch of money or work very well like you thought, you at least have gotten that experience. You can get out of your system and get into your next job feeling a lot more motivated to do that job because you are not dreaming of a possible future in which yes. you can spend all your time doing your own company. Right. Thing. It's a good way to test that hypothesis. Yes. And I find it's a great way to let yourself tackle big projects. I feel like when I'm outside of sabbatical, all my side projects are small, almost by design. Because I feel like if you're working on something on the side, you want to make sure you have enough excitement behind it to keep you going. Mm -hmm. And so you have to see progress quickly. And so the smaller the project, the more you'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But on a sabbatical, you have a lot of time to dive deeply in a complex problem and solve it. Yeah, that's a really good point. I definitely have a graveyard of tiny projects that I've started and have put less than 10 hours of work into because life gets busy. Right. And then I just, I get so many new ideas that I don't finish the ones that I started very far. Or I get them to a point where they're good enough, but then I don't really think about how to launch them into the world. And when you're doing it full time, you just have more time to actually launch things and not just build them or yeah. half finish them. I think it's also really refreshing to get out of the day-to-day -day of doing work. Another good example of this actually is when I was doing my PhD, I had this long running project that I had good ideas come out of it for sure. And I built some visualization tools along the way to support this project. But I was always working on this main project the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then at one point I did an internship, which was very unstructured. There wasn't a project waiting for me. I could just do whatever I wanted. And that was at PacBio. And I actually ended up building my tool Ribbon while I was at PacBio because I had that clean slate where right. I didn't have to continue working on the thing I had been doing before. And that's something I always tell people when they're doing internships or like to encourage them to do internships or even to switch jobs sometimes that you just get a blank slate that gives you time to step away from all the usual projects that you've been doing and just start something new very true and when you're working on your own there's no jira tickets no chats no meetings just you and your code for however long you can ignore your friends and family <laughs> <laughs> 
exactly. <laughs> which is during the work day mostly like yeah. it's fantastic to be able to just devote yourself during the eight hours a day that you have just focusing on your project without having to talk to anyone else about it yeah and it's a great experiment if you find yourself that you do one and after a few months you just aren't liking it that's great you've just found something out that you you don't have to keep wondering oh i should uh do something on my own but you never do and then you keep mm. wondering yeah it's a big deal for some of us who are kind of dreamers a little bit who keep planning the future i feel like sometimes <laughs> i just need to like reset and actually try to build all the projects i've had in mind over the last several years yeah and just like you know take the time to build everything and reset and yeah test them out whether they're gonna work or not do you find that it helps you for the future too not just with your mindset or something but with getting better jobs in the future or helping you decide what kinds of jobs you want? Does it alter the path you were on in terms of what the next job would be as opposed to just having started to look for the next job while you were still at the previous job? I think definitely. Wow, that was a weird thing to say. I think definitely. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. <laughs> definitely. Because here's the thing. When you're working on a sabbatical and you're trying to solve a complex problem, in our case with software, you're bound to come across skills that you don't have and that you need to complete the project. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna pick up those skills, you're gonna see whether you enjoy them more than what you've usually been doing. And so that can definitely impact what you're doing in the future from that perspective. Mm. And I mean, you found that you've produced something during that time that people reach out to you interested in, which can yeah. also give you future opportunities. That's very true. Or possibly the next job. I've heard that right. for other people too, that that can happen. Assuming you actually launch something, which is highly mm. recommended. Yes. You know, if you just sit Generally. and code all day and you never put any of it actually out there, then obviously it's not going to help you that much except for the skills. Mm -hmm. But even that can be really helpful, I think. It's also a good time to just kind of take a step back and say, okay, what kind of things am I interested in? Is it a different area of biology, for instance, mm. or a new skill I want to learn within the software engineering aspects, or new kinds of analysis tools or something I want to get more experience with? It's also a way to get to know yourself. And also getting bored can make you appreciate your next job so yes yeah i found for sure when i was doing om genomics after a while i missed the structure of having a normal job that i could go to every day i think we've many of us have experienced that when working remotely during the COVID era, mm. uh, when we couldn't actually go back to the office at the beginning. And yeah, I think getting some of that structure, getting a place to go every day was definitely something that I appreciated more once I had had an excess of freedom in my mm. day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boredom is good. Yes. But it's also a good time to exercise more start some good new habits yeah. which you will probably lose as soon as your next job starts <laughs> but you know it is better to have exercised and stopped than never to have exercised at all wow <laughs> yeah so i think that kind of covers all the benefits that we wanted to talk about so anything yeah else wanted to I say think that sounds about right mm. so if people are thinking about doing this, what are some of the things they should consider about how to actually make it happen planning wise? I think the the number one thing is figuring out your finances. That's usually a requirement. You probably need a significant runway to do this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're recording this in November 2022 when Facebook and Twitter just had major layoffs, as well as... A whole bunch of biotechs. So right now might not be the best time to quit your job unless you feel very secure in your finances. We always talk about having emergency funds if you ever think about personal finance, which you absolutely should. Mm -hmm. So having an emergency fund of maybe six months to a year, I'd say, is the yeah. minimum if you're going to consider doing this kind of sabbatical. 
it can easily take a few months to get the good next job that you want. So plan yeah, for that. That's um, true. You don't want to be stressed. No. That would kind of ruin the point. So yeah. having a big buffer is necessary. Yeah, absolutely. I found that too with OM Genomics. Even though I did have more runway than I used, I ended up using up like half of my runway. And that was already stressing me out a little mm. bit to the point where I was like, okay, I'm starting to have less fun here. Because, right. So that's something to be aware of. But I think people have different levels of risk tolerance at different yeah. times in their careers too. So finances is probably the top thing that you should consider. And that also feeds into how long should you consider doing a sabbatical. Yeah. I don't think it's a coincidence that both of us ended up doing just about six months. Mm -hmm. seems like a good amount of time. Yeah. And I think for both of us, the first three months were purely projects and we were like very gung ho for it and it was all going great. And then for me, the last three months, I was trying to figure out how to make money. And it, it was kind of mm. like the future of my company seemed like, okay, this isn't actually secure enough. This isn't enough for what I want in my life. Like I'm going to need to find a different way to make money. So I tried to do some freelancing, but couldn't really figure out what I was doing because I wasn't experienced enough in my career yet to actually make it work. Yeah. Um, that leads into a whole nother topic I totally want to talk about later around career capital Ooh, um, yes. and going off of Cal and Newport's book, So Good They Can't Ignore You. I totally want to do an episode on oh, that Oh, absolutely. Later. Yeah. Watch out for episode seven. Sure. <laughs> ish. Seven ish. Seven, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, we can make that episode seven. So now we have to do seven episodes. Oh, damn. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> it is possible that you could get your job to give you a sabbatical. I have not heard of many instances of this. I think it's pretty rare. It would be yeah. A... Sometimes you could do an unpaid thing. Neither of us have experience with that. If anyone does have experience yes. with that, you can reach out to us on Twitter, I guess. We'll link our Twitter accounts in the show notes so that you can actually find us and talk to us on the internet. So yeah, contact us on Twitter if it still exists. Yeah, and... okay. <laughs> if you go to omgenomics.com, my email address is at the bottom of the page. Excellent. That's one place to do it. And we'll put the podcast on as like one of the pages on that website too at some point when we get around to it. Another thing that comes out of finances is healthcare, especially if you're in the U.S. Only if you're in the U.S. Only if you're in the U.S. <laughs> Otherwise, it's usually trivial to figure out. So we know that often your healthcare coverage will last till the end of the month, I That's think. That's right. So if you're quitting, quit the first day of the month. Yep. Make that you your last day. Yeah. You're covered for <laughs> until the rest of the month. Yeah, that's pretty good. Something to think about. And otherwise you can extend your health insurance with COBRA or use the ACA Affordable Care Act marketplace. I think that's healthcare.gov and you just go there and figure it out and see what they have for you. Mm. Um, but of course, if you have a spouse, you can just go on their healthcare plan because you not having your job anymore is usually considered a life event unless your spouse change their health insurance to put you on it. That's right. And this is just what we happen to know, but I'm sure there are lots of exceptions and weird things around this, so we are not experts or financial planners. Disclaimer, disclaimer, don't trust us on anything, but look these things up. So, yes, yeah. <laughs> this advice is to be taken as is with no liability to ourselves something like that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. basically if you follow our advice it's your own fault <laughs> <laughs> something else we wrote down about how to plan for this is it's a good idea to plan a little bit of what you want to work on yes to have a few ideas lined up because it can very easily turn into just a long vacation there's only so many days of watching tv that you can take before it starts to just feel kind of depressing so it's definitely good to have some ideas ahead of time that you're excited about that motivate you to get off the couch during your sabbatical and i would also encourage you to have some plans for things like exercising or maybe mm. 
other things you can do during your time. I guess you can't meet up with people because everybody's working nine to five. One thing you could do is start scheduling a whole bunch of lunches mm. with your former colleagues or people you know who still work. Those are a lot of fun because part of it is they're always like, oh, okay, I should get back. And you're just like, oh, well, I'll just stick around for a bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely felt that. Yeah, the other thing is like both of us are on parental leave right now. Totally coincidental that we're yeah. both on parental leave. Yeah, how does that happen? Together. What are the odds? We just both happen to have the same kid. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this podcast comes out of us not necessarily having more time because with a kid, we do not have much time to actually work on things, but we do kind of have the mental space mm. and we're hanging around the house a lot, talking to each other about ideas for things we want to do. And so this podcast comes out of this time when we're both on parental leave. Anything else to add, Maria, before we end this lovely episode? Go to omgenomics.com slash podcast to ask us questions. This can be kind of a Q&A style podcast. We have some topics we want to talk about. The next episode is going to be titled, You Might Be an Imposter. <gasps> and that's okay. Uh. <laughs> So we're going to talk about all sorts of career-related topics, side projects, and small bootstrap businesses, because we've both yes. done some of that kind of work ourselves. We also want to hear from people who have had interesting career paths, things like going between industry and academia, yeah. a little bit of back and forth, maybe people who have done businesses, people who are freelancing. And we do want to bring other people on the podcast to interview them in order to get perspectives on some of these issues. We're not gonna talk a bunch about the scientific research and go all deep on transposons or something. Oh, Oh darn. yeah. But we are gonna have conversations like this one and we wanna do more of these types of interesting topics and we'll bring people on to help us fill in the gaps in our own perspectives. So that's a long explanation for what we want this podcast to be. And I think the end of the first episode is a good place to put it, that's right? That's true. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, me neither. It just kind of happened. So, yeah. Kind of mm. like the rest of this podcast will. It's just going to happen. It's just going to yeah. happen. We're figuring this out as we go along. But we wanted to do the podcast this way because the kinds of podcasts that we like listening to already are conversations like this one. For instance, Soft Skills Engineering and the effort report. So that's what we're going for here. Let's see how that goes. All right, I guess it's time to wrap this up. Subscribe and stuff. Yes, thank you for listening. Yeah. We'll see you soon. Later. Mm -hmm. At some point, Okay. maybe. Okay, bye. bye.